Hey, this is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today I'm going to show you how to find a vein on your patient before you start an IV. Starting an IV takes skill and one of the skills to help you be successful at it is to find a good vein that is viable that you're going to be able to stick first time and make it easier for the patient and for yourself. So in this video I want to show you how to find veins. Typically in males, males are a little bit easier to find veins on, especially if they're healthier because males veins tend to be superficial and larger compared to a female. Females, um, unless they do cardiovascular exercise or an athlete, their veins are a little bit more covered with subcutaneous fat. So in a male, you're typically going to see larger veins. So this person I'm using is male and he's healthy so his veins are a lot easier to find. In the hospital setting, you're probably not going to have a patient with great veins like you're about to see here in a second. Patients in the hospital are usually really sick, they're dehydrated, so their veins are going to be smaller and a little bit more difficult to find. So here we go and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, first you'll want to tell the patient what you're doing, that you're going to be looking for a vein. You probably want to spend a minute or two trying to find a vein. And if you notice his veins, you can see them already without a tourniquet. Most people, you have to put the tourniquet on to get these veins to pop out. So here in a second, I'll put the tourniquet on. But notice you can already see his veins. So when you put the tourniquet on, tell them what you're doing. You're going to put the tourniquet on. And try to put the tourniquet on tight, but not too tight. And ask them if it's too tight. But you want it tight enough so it makes the blood pool in the lower extremity. And already these veins are starting to collect with blood and becoming gorged. Two tips to help engorge the veins the best you can. Have the patient lower their arms so the blood pulls down to the extremity. Next, have the patient pump their hand. This causes the blood to really pull. Okay, so they get nice and engorged and compared to before, these veins have become more engorged. So I'm going to talk about the different areas that we typically start an IV on. You always like to use the hand, the hand or the arm. We very rarely go up, up into the shoulder or anything like that. That's usually on really patients who are hard to stick. Typically, the arm is sufficient enough. So first, I want to talk about the antecubital area. This is the AC area. You may hear in the hospital setting the nurse say he has an 18 gauge in his right AC. So this is the AC area that they're talking about. Typically in the human, the veins are always in the same spot, so everyone should have the same veins in the same areas. They can be a little bit to the left or to the right, but generally they'll be in these areas. Right here is a vein. This is a very large, great vein. Um, you could get an 18 gauge in this vein. There's a vein right here in the middle. Um, I really like this vein. It, I normally use it a lot because it's in patients that I can easily find. Um, I don't see this vein a lot, especially in females. I normally see this vein, so I stick that one. And then this one, this is another favorite one. People really like to draw blood out of this one too. A key, some people are seers. They can see the vein and they poke it. I'm a filler. I have to be able to feel the springiness of the vein. It tells me a lot about how, if the vein rolls, if how large it is, and where the placement of it is. So if you're a filler, um, what you need to do is you need to take your index finger and always fill the vein. Veins have a unique feel to them. Compared to like if you're filling the skin, it doesn't feel like a vein. So if you're new to starting IVs, I really recommend you practice on yourself with filling your veins. Like put a tourniquet on and just fill your veins. Get a feeling for them because once you understand how they feel, you'll know whether you're feeling a vein or not. That was the biggest thing whenever I was a student. I would always say, am I feeling a vein? Is that a vein? But now I know without a doubt because I have it down so well of how a vein feels if it's a vein. So that's your AC region. Next region that people like to stick IVs in is the forearm. Typically the forearm is from here to here. So that's the forearm area. Um, there's a lot of veins in the forearm. On this person, he has a really, really nice vein right here. Um, it's very large, a little bit of a skinnier one right here, and then some more in this area. Typically people like to go in this area, but I have seen them on the top of the arm. 
Um, not a lot of people have superficial veins in the top of the arm. And then on the back of the arm too, there's some. If you have a man and he is hairy like this, you'll want to like shave it with um, not the straight blade, but just little clippers and just trim the hair. So whenever you do get your IV, you can tape it down. Because I've seen a lot of times where you tape down the IV and the tape comes unloose within an hour or two and you lose your IV. So that's always disheartening when you lose an IV because you didn't tape it down right. So typically just clip the hairs on a male patient if they have long hair. Next is your hand. People really love to start IVs in the hand because the hand does not have a lot of fat in it. So they're really superficial and you can find them very well. So in this person, he has really nice hand veins. But a problem with the hand veins is when you start an IV, these veins like to roll. So let me give you some tips on how to prevent a rolling vein. First of all, whenever you're assessing your veins, you want to make sure it isn't a roller. How you can tell if a vein's a roller, you'll take your finger and just sort of mess with it. And whenever you mess with it, do you see how these, see how that vein right there likes to roll side to side? Okay, what's going to happen? If we didn't use this trick I'm going to show you, if I poked him with a needle, I would poke the skin. Whenever I poked it, it would go to the side like that, okay? And then your, vet, your needle would go beside of the vein instead of in it. And then it would roll, you'd miss, and you'd have to try all over. So what you would do is you have the patient hold their hand, nice tight fist, and see, it keeps really, really tight. So whenever I stick him with, this need, with the needle, it wouldn't roll. It's less likely to roll. So that's always a tip. Now if you were starting it up in the forearm and it was a rolling vein, you could just keep it taut like that. Just do your hand out like that and keep it taut and then poke it with a needle and it should keep it from rolling. Sometimes veins are going to roll and it's just going to happen. But those are some little tips and tricks on how to prevent that. And then whenever you're done, of course, starting your IV, you'll pop the tourniquet off real fast and then you're done. So that was just a little bit, some of the tips and tricks I've learned over my nursing career on how to find a vein. Um, they've helped me throughout the year and I've increased my success rate with starting IVs. I will be making a video on how to start IVs, so please check that out. And thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please share it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And be sure to visit my website, registerednursrn.com, for a bunch of nursing tips and anything to help with your nursing school. Thanks.